So I'm going to be talking about energy and institution size. So uh, let's get things started with a beautiful quote from the anthropologist uh, Leslie White about 70 years ago now. He said, culture is a kind of behavior and behavior, whether man, mule, plant, comet, or molecule may be treated as a manifestation of energy. And I'm sure many of us know that this is broadly too true, that energy is kind of the basis of all life, and so it's obviously the basis of human society. But beyond kind of a general statement about that, um, it's hard to make specific predictions. And so one of the things that I do in my research is try to understand how culture, broadly understood, relates to changes in energy consumption. And today I'm going to show you some of the evidence. I'm going to show you how institutions change in size as energy changes. And I'm going to, uh, I'll first bombard you with some evidence that shows you that this is a fact. And then I'm going to show you my explanation um, for, I, for why I think this relation exists. So why do institutions get larger? It's, it's a fact of life. I think any of you who have been alive for um, you know, more than a couple decades can see that um, firms and governments often tend to get larger with time. And so I want to I wanna understand why this is. So this is just uh, briefly, I'm going to show, I'm going to summarize the evidence that I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you that as energy use per capita increases, four things happen. First, self-employment declines. Fewer people are self-employed. The employment share of large firms increases. So big firms get bigger. Three, average firm size increases. So on average, all firms are getting larger. And four, governments get bigger. The government share of employment increases. So I'm going to show you the evidence for this on four, uh, three levels, actually. So let's jump into the evidence. We'll start with international data. So this is a plot. Let me explain what is going on here. On the bottom, we have energy use per capita in gigajoules on the x-axis. On the y-axis, we have the self-employment uh, share of total employment. So up here at 100, that's everybody is self-employed. Down here at 1, 1% 1 of the population is self-employed. Now, each squiggly line here is the path through time of a country. And the dots are countries where there's only one uh, observation. So what you're, sh you're seeing here is international data that shows that as energy use increases, the self-employment rate basically collapses. So up here are, are countries like um, Ethiopia, um, Bangladesh, use very little energy and almost everybody is self-employed. Down here I think this is Qatar. So self-employment collapses as energy use increases. Now the flip side of that is large firms. So this again is international data. On the x-axis is energy use per capita. And on the vertical axis is the share of employment held by the 25 largest corporations. And so what happens is that energy use increases. These tw top 25 firms get larger. So they share, uh, they um, um, employ a larger percentage of the population. So down here, again, I think this is Bangladesh, and up here are all the, the industrialized countries. So large firms get larger as energy use increases. And then this is average firm size. So each dot here is a country, and uh, the vertical lines, those are, those are error bars. So on the bottom, again, is energy use per capita, and on the uh, horizontal axis is the average size of firm in each country. And again, uh, firms get larger as energy use increases on average. And then last, government. So again, energy use per capita on the horizontal axis and the employment share of government now on the uh, vertical axis. 
And so governments are getting larger on average as energy use increases, although the trend is, is kind of messy. And then note here, I'll be talking about these countries um, later in the talk, but you can probably guess these are actually former Soviet bloc nations. And, and what, what's happening is here is they are collapsing. So I'll talk about this more later in the talk, but we can see basically that these Soviet bloc countries, the government collapsed and energy use collapsed as well. So government, uh, to summarize, is getting larger as energy use increases. So that was the international data. I'm going to show you U.S. data, and the reason I, I focus on the U.S. is basically because it's got the deepest data. We can go back more than a century in U.S. history and, and plot the trend in firm size. So we'll start again with self-employment. So this blue curve here is the self-employment rate. But notice that, it, and, and the axis is on the left, and I flipped it just so that I can show the correlation with energy. So as we move up this axis now, um, self-employment is declining. The self-employment rate is declining. And then this is over time here. And then the gray is energy use per capita. So no surprise here, energy use grew for most of the 20th century, but then peaked in mm, late 1960s, early 1970s, and has been basically constant ever since. And so has the self-employment rate. So a pretty good correlation there. This is the employment share now in blue. This is the employment share of the largest 200 corporations and uh, that's on the left axis. And it goes back to 1950, that data. And I plotted it against the energy use per capita again. So what's interesting is then this, this massive growth in the 50s and then plateau basically over the last um, 50, well, 40 years or give or take. And the plateau happens at the same time for energy as it does for uh, these large firms. Now this is average firm size in blue. Now we, here we have 120, 100, almost, almost 130 years of data and the correlation is really tight. So as energy use increases, uh, the average size of firms is growing. And the plateau again happens al almost identically with energy. We have a bit of a disconnect uh, over the last 10, 15 years. I'm not sure if that's um, something significant or if I don't know, necessarily trust the data enough to say that this is des something different going on, but we can see as the future unfolds. And then this is government. So we have here in blue the, the government uh, share of em employment. So that's all government, federal, um, local, state. And I, I've excluded World War II here in the regression uh, just because there's obviously this huge spike World War II, but again, growth over most of the century in both um, government share and employment, or sorry, government share of employment and energy use per capita, and then and then a plateau. And so, what's interesting is that many of us. I didn't live through this era, but if you did, you were probably aware of the politics going that were going on, but maybe you didn't know about, uh, or maybe you did since you're at this conference. But many people, I suspect, had no idea that this was connected. The politics were somehow connected with um, energy consumption. And we can keep going, actually. It, at basically every level of analysis, there's a correlation between energy and firm size. So I'm going to show you how this will add U.S. sectors to the graph. And, what, and what's interesting about U.S. sectors is you get into the really energy-intense manufacturing sectors, and they have, first of all, huge energy use, but huge firms. So let's again start with self-employment. Now let's summarize this data. The red data is the original international data that I showed you. So again, this is the self-employment rate on the y-axis and the energy use per uh, person on the horizontal axis. So that's the international data. This green curve here is the U.S. as a whole. The teal or blue here, that's U.S. industry. So that's uh, industry includes construction and manufacturing. And then these little um, purple dots and lines are sectors in U.S. manufacturing. So what's interesting is that adding this extra data 
extends the trend. So down here, for instance, the most energy intense sector, and I'm sorry I didn't label it, this dot way over here, is petroleum refining. Now, refineries are enormous. They use an enormous amount of energy, and it's no surprise that there are very few people uh, running self-employed refineries. So the self-employee rate, uh, employment rate in um, the oil refinery business is basically non-existent. But what is interesting here is that the, the, this subsector data extends the trend. The same is true of employment share of large firms. So I've plotted here the employment share of, uh, I believe, the largest 200 firms. So the, the red is the international data. Green, that's the U.S. Uh, history, all of the U.S. Blue is U.S. industry, and then these uh, purple dots are U.S. manufacturing subsectors. And they're all very energy intensive, so they're way up here in energy use, and they're also extremely concentrated. These large firms, um, in some cases, have almost 100% employment share. So that, that, again, continues the trend. And then this is average firm size. So again, red is uh, average firm size versus energy use for countries of the world. The um, green is the trend in the U.S. Uh, up here, blue is U.S. industry, and then the purple is manufacturing sectors. So I know that, that there's not much of a correlation within U.S. manufacturing sectors, but what's interesting is when you add them to all of the other data, the correlation actually gets better. There's a better correlation between the average firm size and energy use per person slash per worker. So basically, at every at every level of analysis, we see this this trend: uh, institutions getting larger with energy use. And we we can actually describe this um, mathematically. So I've showed you different pictures of what's going on, but here's basically the unified picture, which is this: uh, firm size, to a rough degree, is follows a power law distri distribution. So what I've shown here is uh, on the bottom is firm size, and I've used a log scale. So starting at a firm of one, going up to a firm size of a thousand, and then the vertical axis shows you the density, basically how many of each size of firms there are. And if you know about the mathematics of power laws, you know that when you plot a power law distribution on a log-log scale like this, you get basically a straight line. You would get a perfect straight line if it was a perfect power law distribution. So what you see here is a straight line, meaning that roughly these uh, firm size distributions follow a power law. But more interestingly uh, is that this power law changes with energy use. So what I've done here is I've grouped countries of the world into uh, three groups uh, by energy use. So red is the bottom third of nations by energy use. Green is the middle third by energy, and, top, um, and blue is the top third. And what you see here is that the slope for this firm size distribution uh, changes w with energy use, and it changes in a very specific way. And we can, we can quantify that with what's called the, the power law exponent. And so I, I've shown you what, what uh, estimates are for the exponent here. But basically, in visual terms, this, the slope of this distribution is getting shallower which means the tail is getting fatter so what's happening is is that basically there's a creep towards bigger and bigger firms but it happens in the tail most firms are are small universally in all in all countries but there's this creep towards bigness in the tail so what's interesting is that we can describe this mathematically basically with one parameter this power law distribution now that's an interesting mathematical explanation, but let's get into some more uh, sociological and uh, cultural explanations. And I'm going to tell you what I think. Um, some people disagree with me, but we can maybe talk about that in the discussion. So I think there's a fundamental relation between energy use and social coordination. Basically, as we use more energy, uh, the things that we're doing are more complicated. So society just gets more complex. So I think there is a feedback between energy use and social complexity for many reasons, but I'll discuss one that's quantifiable here. 
particularly technological scale. And I only talk about technological scale because that's something that's fairly easy to measure. So basically as energy use increases, technologies get bigger. And for that reason, more people have to cooperate. And here's one particular case study. Uh, I'm going to show you how the size of um, power plants basically um, have changed over the last century. So just to kind of qualify things and give you a picture of what's going on, on the left here is a hydroelectric plant in Wisconsin in 1882, probably one of the first ever built. It had a capacity of 12 and a half kilowatts. And on the right here is the Three Gorges Dam, um, finished in 2003 in China. It has a capacity of 22 million kilowatt hours, uh, or kilowatts, sorry. So a, a <clears throat> A million times larger, basically. So an enormous increase in the size of technologies. And um, this is actually very general. So we can quantify this. Uh, first of all, so what I've shown you here is U.S. data. And the blue is energy use, uh, sorry, electricity use per capita. And it's indexed to 1 in 1920. And I'm comparing it to the average size of U.S. power plants, the average nameplate capacity. So over the, uh, since 1920, this nameplate capacity on average grew by about a factor of 15. And electricity use somewhat outpaced it. But what's interesting is that basically the U.S. met the increasing demand for electricity almost, um, not entirely, but in large part just by increasing the size of power plants. And as those power plants plateaued in the 1980s, um, driven partly by um, Three Mile Island, so no more nuclear reactors, uh, electricity use per capita uh, plateaued. So there's this connection between power plant scale and electricity use. And then we, we can go one step further and say these larger technologies require more people to coordinate. So I'm going to show you the construction time of different sized power plants. So on the bottom here, we have the capacity in watts of various power plants. And on the vertical axis, we have the uh, labor time, uh, estimated labor time to construct these power plants in worker years. Now we have this huge, uh, what is it, eight order of magnitude scale. Down here in the green are gasoline generators, basically a, a generator that you can move around and take camping. As we go up here, we get to the larger diesel generators, nas natural gas generators, um, and then into the big thermoelectric power plants. Uh, blue here is big coal power plants, and then, sorry, red is coal power plants, uh, nuclear, and then the, the largest are, um, are hydroelectric. So what's important here is the, the extremely tight correlation. You want basically a larger power plant, you have to hire more people to build it. So extremely tight correlation between the need for cooperation and uh, generating electricity, more electricity. So we have this feedback between energy and social coordination and potentially between social coordination and institution size. But uh, you may object, especially um, somebody who's trained uh, in neoclassical economics, you might say, well, why not uh, use the market? Why are we using uh, firms and governments? Well, I'll get to that. And the reason, I think, has to do with uh, human limitations. There are, I believe, biological limits to how we can coordinate. And many of you have probably heard this argument. It's not unique to me. Um, um, 30 years ago, the anthropologist Robin Dunbar uh, discovered that there's a, a very tight correlation between brain size in primates and the average group size. In and so here, this, this is his plot. On the bottom, we have the size of the neocortex relative to the rest of the brain. And each dot here is a different uh, species of primate. Humans are not on here, by the way. And then on the uh, vertical axis is average group size. And you can see that uh, basically there's this tight correlation. As brains get larger, average group size gets larger. And so basically Dunbar argued that this is because there are limitations to our ability to coordinate. And if you basically go ahead and extrapolate that, 
then you find that human group size is going to be limited as well, a function as brain size. So the problem with markets is that they scale uh, linearly with the number of people in them. So these are different size groups, and what you can see here is that in each group, the number of potential people that you can interact with scales linearly with the group size. If there's two people in the, or three people in the group, you could potentially act, interact with two. If there's three, uh, four people in the group, you can interact with three, and so on. So we have this linear scaling of, of potential relations with group size. Hierarchy, though, uh, doesn't have this problem. If you're in a hierarchy, if you're this blue person in the hierarchy, you only have to interact with your superior and your subordinates. So you're interacting with three people in this particular hierarchy. And that's true regardless of the the size of the hierarchy. So this is something that Peter Turchin has pointed out. I'm taking this argument from him. That what hierarchy does is it allows group size to grow independently of the number of relations that each individual person has to have. And I think that's a powerful tool. So basically I'm arguing that institutions get larger with energy use because they are the most powerful tool for coordination and they're basically hierarchy. So governments and firms, they're hierarchies. So now I'm going to show you that there's actually evidence that this, this is in fact true, that as energy use grows, so does hierarchy. So um, the way I'm going to do this is with a, um, I'm going to relate the energy use to the number of managers. Basically, if there's, we use more energy, there are more managers in society. So here's the data. Uh, this is energy use per person on the horizontal axis. Each squiggly line here is a country, and I plotted here on the left manager's share of total employment. So there's this nonlinear trend. As energy use increases, management's share of employment grows. And uh, so I'm going to show you that this is a direct consequence of the growth of hierarchy. Now, I'm not, I can't go into the details of this model, but... Um, we perhaps can get into it in the questions, but I have a, developed a model of hierarchy that basically looks like this. We assume that firms, firm size follows a power law distribution, like I showed, and that as, as energy use increases, um, um, sorry, as average firm size grows, energy use grows, and that firms are hierarchically organized, and that managers are in the top ranks. So I can show you a picture of the last part of that, Uh, I have about uh, three slides left, and then I will open it up, okay? Okay. So here, as energy use increases in these hierarchies, the share of management is growing. Uh, and so when we put this into a model, this is basically the prediction. As the management share of employment grows here on the left axis, um, tightly, it, it's going to relate non-linearly with the energy use per capita. So that's the prediction of the model and it and agrees quite uh, strongly here with the uh, black dots. Those are the, that's the empirical data. Now just very briefly a note on causation. Can we tie causation down? Well hard to do but there are, we have at least one case study where I think causation runs one way. So I alluded to this earlier in the talk. These are the, the Soviet, former Soviet bloc nations, and what we're seeing here is them collapsing you know, from 1990 uh, till 2010. And so the, this is the government share of employment on the vertical axis and energy use per capita on the horizontal axis. Uh, and I think here very clearly causation runs from institutions to energy. There was a political collapse, basically, and that led to a, an energy collapse. There was no worldwide shortage. So, conclusions. Um, in very general terms, we know, just from the laws of thermodynamics, that uh, culture has to relate to energy use. But beyond general statements like from Leslie White, it's actually difficult to make predictions, but if we, what I do and is look at the empirical data, and when we do that, there's very clear signs that energy, at least for our, our that culture, at least when it comes to institution size, uh, is related to energy use. So, thank you.